Hello and welcome to MSK Unknown Case 97. This is Dr. Omar Awan. Thanks for joining us on the MedEd page here. We have a frontal view of the wrist and there is definitely an intraarticular radial fracture and I'm not concerned about that, but there is another finding here and hopefully we can take a look at and decipher what that is. So what's the next best step in management based on the other finding that's not the intraarticular radial fracture? Is it a, getting a lateral X-ray, a CT of the wrist, an MRI of the wrist, or an orthopedic reduction. What would be the next best step in management? Well, I hope what you've seen is, is that not only is there an intraarticular radial fracture, this lunate is a little abnormal. In fact, the morphology is not what it should be. Usually a lunate will be kind of rectangular, trapezoidal, but here it's pie-shaped. We have a pie-shaped lunate, right? And that indicates that there is some element of carpal malalignment because the morphology of the lunate has changed. So the next best step here would be to get a lateral x-ray, a lateral x-ray, because we don't know what this is. Based on this image, it could actually be one of four things. It could be a scaphalunate rotary subluxation. It could be a perilunate dislocation. It could be a mid-carpal dislocation, or it could even be a lunate dislocation. We don't know unless we see a lateral view. And the teaching point for this case really is that one view is no view right? In radiology, you may have heard that mantra before. And in order to really characterize pathology well in radiology, you must get two views that are 90 degrees to each other to assess exactly what is going on. So this is a nice example of how just looking at the PA radiograph is not sufficient. You really need to look at two views to really understand what's going on and decipher those four things that I'm talking about, right? So you must get two views to assess pathology. So the finding that we saw on the PA radiograph was that there was a pie-shaped lunate. And that's just indicative that there is some instability or carpal malalignment. It doesn't tell us exactly what the diagnosis is. Based on that finding alone, it could be one of four of these things that I mentioned, right? A scaphalunate rotary subluxation, a perilunate dislocation, a mid-carpal dislocation, or even a lunate dislocation. The lateral view is really gonna answer that question for us. So if we take a look here, you know, the lateral view is going to be key because we have this pie-shaped lunate on the frontal view, but the lateral is what gives this away, right? So if you take a look here, we have the lunate that should actually be sitting right on top of the radius. It's actually been dislocated 90 degrees anteriorly or volarly because this is the volar aspect or the palmar aspect of the wrist. This is the dorsal aspect of the wrist. And this lunate has kind of been, it should be sitting right on top of the radius, but instead it has kind of dislocated volarly 90 degrees, indicating that this is actually a lunate dislocation. This is diagnostic of a lunate dislocation, right? So I think an important thing is, is that looking at a normal lateral view, notice that the radius, the lunate, and the capitate form a nice straight line. They sit right on top of each other. So this bone right here is the radius. This T-cup-shaped bone right here is a lunate. Notice that it sits right on top of the radius. And sitting right on top of the lunate is the capitate. And, you know, there's no real mnemonic that can help, but I, you know, tried chat GPT and, you know, the mnemonic that they gave was run, leap, catch. And that's what you see here. Maybe this will help you understand the normal anatomy on a lateral view, run, leap, catch, but it's pretty much the radius, lunate, and the cavity sit right on top of each other. When that doesn't happen, then you have some element of carpal malalignment. So, for example, the three examples that we can talk about are that in a perilunate dislocation, which is not what I showed, the radius and the lunate would articulate normally, but then the capitate goes dorsally. So if we come back here, the radius and the lunate would be fine, but then the capitate would go dorsally, would go posteriorly. That's a perilunate dislocation, okay? Now, in a mid-carpal dislocation, we typically have something where the capitate kind of goes slightly dorsally and the lunate goes slightly volarly. So uh, it would be something in between a perilunate dislocation and a lunate dislocation. The capitate which is right here, would go slightly dorsally and the lunate would go slightly volarly. In a frank lunate dislocation, the lunate goes volarly or anteriorly by 90 degrees, like we saw in our index case, okay? So those that's the difference between the three different aspects of carpal malalignment. And notice that the lateral view was the one that was most telling, the one that answered the question to us. They all look very similar on the frontal view. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the MedEd page and we'll see you next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.